So you've bought your first boat. Congratulations. Of course, the first thing you want to do is take it out. Hi, I'm Wayne the Boat Guy, and I want to talk to you about your first few trips out on your boat as a new boater. So this is it. It's your big day. You're finally getting to take your very own boat out for the first time ever. Your boat is registered, you've passed a safety course, you've watched some YouTube videos. Maybe you've even watched some of my YouTube videos, like how to drive a boat. And now you're finally taking your boat out on its maiden voyage. But wait, are you really prepared for your first time out on the water? Chances are you're not completely ready. But that's okay, I'll walk you through this so that you'll be much better prepared. And keep watching because later on in this video, I'll share my first long boat trip down to Annapolis. So let's start by assuming that you're ready with all of your pre-trip preparations. You have all of your safety gear, your boat engine has been checked out and is fueled up. You've got water, you've got sunblock, hats and stuff. And your drain plug is definitely in your boat. The most difficult place to operate your boat is at the marina or boat ramp. Currents, tides, breezes, all those dang obstacles that you have to try to avoid banging into. But once you get past there, what else is there to know? You see all these other people just cruising away in their boats. It looks very easy. But they've probably done this before. Maybe hundreds of times before. We all think we can just zoom off in a boat, but we wouldn't try that with a hand glider. So what's a good plan? When I bought my first boat, a friend gave me some really good advice. They told me to just do really short trips at slow speeds my first few times out and avoid water that's less than three feet deep. Like literally just go out for a 15 minute ride and then come back. So that's exactly what I did. I found a depth chart of the area I was going to be boating. I plotted a rough idea of where I would go and what landmarks and markers I would use to help me. I allowed for a little time to learn the controls and get a feel for how the boat operated. And then I headed back. Now that might sound super lame. And if you just plan to hang out on the lake all day in your new boat, this might not completely apply to you. But stick with me here. I realized with that trip out that not only did I have some difficulty leaving the marina, I got a bit confused recognizing right of way with other boaters. And I learned that if I let go of the wheel, the boat wouldn't even attempt to stay heading straight. And coming back into the marina was even harder. I took a similar approach to the way I did my first trip for my next several trips. Each time I might go out for a little longer or a little farther away. I learned about the draft of my boat and how sometimes the charts can be misleading because of tides and shifting sands. Finding something like a submerged piling can severely damage your boat or your engine and suddenly put you in a situation where you have to remember how to signal for help. On one of these early trips, I shut my boat off just to relax a little bit, float and drift. I learned two huge things that day. First, I found out that my old two-stroke motor would flood if you started it incorrectly. Second, I found out I knew nothing about how to drop an anchor. So there I was, cranking on my engine the wrong way, smelling the gas fumes, and drifting towards waters that I did not want to be boating in. Luckily, I did end up getting it started, and I got out of there. And it wasn't a disaster. But I realized that day that I still had an awful lot to learn before I should be venturing out very far with my boat. So the reason to take short trips and stay close to the marina is to get more comfortable with operating your boat. After about a dozen trips, I actually was much better at every aspect of operating my boat. I certainly wasn't good at some things yet, but I was better at many things and much more comfortable with the process. I've often said it's like when you first learn to drive a car. You didn't take a two hour trip into the city and drive over toll bridges on your first time out in your car. And you should treat learning to drive a boat the same way. Short trips and build on your knowledge slowly. 
I eventually mastered the technique to start and restart my engine under any conditions. I learned how to trim my engine, get my boat on plane, how to cross the wake from a bigger boat without scaring my passengers. Basically, I became a lot more experienced. But if I had just headed out to some far off destination on my very first trip out, it could have easily ended in disaster. Especially if I was to naively assume that driving a boat is easy and no different than driving a car. Because I was cautious and took baby steps, and also because I had a very old boat, it was a few months before I was ready to take a longer trip. But by the time I did that, I was well prepared for that trip, and it went perfectly because I was more experienced and prepared. Earlier in this video, I said I would share my first long boat trip. My definition of a long boat trip in a power boat is one where you need to refuel to complete the trip. So of course, if you have like a 100 gallon tank, you can go pretty far away before you need to refuel. But my little boat only had two portable six gallon tanks. So I wasn't going too far away for my first trip. And now here's some footage of my first long boat trip down to Annapolis. Hi, I'm Wayne the Boat Guy. And today I'm doing a big adventure. I'm taking my boat down to Annapolis. I know to some people who are experienced boaters, it's like big whoop. But to somebody like me, this is the longest trip I've ever taken in this old boat. It's gonna be anywhere for an hour and a half to two hour ride. Uh, I'm not doing it by myself. I have Gingy Videos here with me. Hey. And he is going to uh, be my co-pilot, my navigator, and uh, somebody to hang out with and chat along the way. We think it'll take us about an hour and a half to two hours to get there. Hopefully we have enough fuel and supplies to get us down there. We only have enough fuel, I think, to get us to Annapolis. Obviously I'm bringing extra just in case, but from whenever I measured it out, I'm thinking I'm gonna need like maybe 10 gallons or so to get to Annapolis and I have about 15 on board, so we should be good to go. Um, but we do not have enough for the round trip if it takes us 10 gallons to get to Annapolis. So we'll shoot a little bit of video along the way. Obviously you don't need to see us just riding around in the boat. So let's say we get this ship underway, shall we? In my old 19 foot boat, I had two six gallon fuel tanks. And I learned to make sure that my reserve tank had more fuel than my primary tank. So before this trip, I had never ventured farther away than what my primary tank would take me. If I were out riding around for the day, when tank number one got low on fuel, I would switch out to tank number two and then we would head back. By the time we took this trip, I knew how to switch my tanks and rough waters and how to get my boat restarted quickly. I had things like a towing policy on my boat. I knew how to use my VHF radio, and I had practiced with my anchor a couple times. As I was planning the trip, knowing all of these things seemed essential to us being able to successfully make it down to Annapolis and back. So now we're in the six mile an hour zone coming out of the Magathy River into the bay. Water's really smooth today. It's a good day to be out here. It's hot though. Can't wait till we get out of the six mile an hour zone because uh, <laughs> get some cool air blowing on us again. A couple of crabbing people are out here, some crabbing boats, a lot of crab traps set. Don't know if it's a good year for crabs or not. I've heard mixed reviews so far. Well, we'll just put put along in the channel here and then we're going to be out in the bay. Next thing you know, we'll be at the Bay Bridge. When you're shooting vertical, Instagrammer. <laughs> 
I do both. <laughs> I, do a little, I do a little bit of both. I'm shooting it too, so. The reason why uh, gearheads hate uh, vertical video is the reason why it's being successful. because I shoot video. They're like, oh, all video guys like hate for video. But I'm like, no, I think it's cool because it poses a new challenge. Yeah. You have to think differently about the kind of stuff that you're making. You know what I mean? Yeah. Before this trip, we had been down as far as the Bay Bridge a couple of times, but it was as far away from home as we had ventured with our boat. So the weather has been perfect. Uh, the bay has been perfect. It's very smooth out here today. I mean, it's not like glass, but as you can see, it's pretty smooth. And right now we're uh, getting ready to pass the uh, three, three tower antennas here uh, in Annapolis, coming into Annapolis Harbor. And uh, we're still on our first tank of fuel, our first six gallons, and we're not even too far below half. So we're actually looking pretty good fuel wise. We're making good time. We're about 45 minutes into the trip and we haven't even used a tank of fuel yet. So feeling good about this. The story of these towers, apparently they used to be used a long time ago for communications and they haven't been in service for many years. Supposedly, They've been decommissioned a long time ago, but nobody wants them to be gone because everybody likes those towers. They're a nice landmark when you're coming into Annapolis. You can see them from way out in the bay. You can actually even see them from our river. So they're kind of a landmark thing. And it's funny because I'm sure when they built them, everybody thought they were an eyesore. And there's people who probably still think they're an eyesore, but other people who like look at them and go, that's, that's, that's my hometown right there. It's just funny how people look at those things differently. I'm heading straight for that red marker, but I got these crab pots here, so I'm kind of trying to ride around them. Yep, I'm turning me forward because I can see the other red marker down here, and I see we the green marker. Four feet of water, by the way. How many? Four. 
Four. Wow. No wonder the marker's there. See, I'd love to be able to use my depth finder to see exactly how many feet of water we're in, but oh, it's saying 8.7, so it's actually might be working now. Because <laughs> remember, your map errors on the side of conservative, you know? Yeah. So this is actually getting readings right now, so. And I'm going 8.9 miles an hour, so I need to slow it down a little bit. Because we're coming up on speed limit markers. That's what these white posts are up here. See, now I've kind of brought us into the channel. We're probably in deeper water now, right? Are we in deeper water now? Um, I think we're fine. Yeah, yeah we're fine. Yep, because now I'm in the... See the next red marker right down there? See, here's our speed limit thing, and see that red thing down there, orangey yeah. red? Yep, that's our next marker, because there's the green marker over here, so. That's that red marker, it should be 24 feet. Yep. And you're good depth-wise, you got a lot of space around. Oh yeah, I know, we're in probably 20 feet of water, right? Yeah. Look at these waves, though. These are wild. Mm -hmm. Wee! That's because this is where the Severn River meets up. It makes it a little bit lumpy. It must have been somebody else coming by making a wake too, because. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that was from. Woo! That was some lumpity lump lumps. Well, here we are. We're in downtown Annapolis, parked right here in Ego Alley. Yep, I put my old boat right here in Ego Alley. And uh, we stopped off and got some fuel before we came in over the uh, Annapolis Harbor Marina and found out I used four gallons of fuel to get down here, which was great. We were averaging about, how many knots were we averaging when you checked? Was it like 10, uh, 10 knots, 12 I knots? Don't yeah. <laughs> We were probably going about 15 miles an hour most of the time uh, coming here, um, but everything went perfectly. We, we, we found our way here, we, we fueled up like, like a champ. I wish I had footage of that because it literally looked like I knew what I was doing. And then we came down Ego Alley and as I was getting ready to figure out how to pull up here, the, uh, the dock master came on out, met us, explained to us how it works, told us where to tie off. See, we are all tied off right here in B12. This is our parking space right now. Look, we got some ducks. Some ducks have come up to see us. Hi, ducks. See, they're, they're okay with us being parked here. They're like, yeah, your old boat can park here. We're good. We're gonna hang out down here in Annapolis for a little bit, grab a bite, grab a drink, and uh, then we're gonna head on back home again. So it was a very successful trip, right? I'd say so. Yep. Yeah. Made it, fueled up, parked. And Andrew did a great job being my navigator, kept me off any sandbars, so. Boat that's slightly bigger and nicer than mine. Pass it in front of it. It's you know, great. You know what if they your way? That's right. Oh, I have rocking chairs. There's rocking chairs There's there. my boat. Right there. See this cool rocking yeah. chair? Yeah, yep. Okay. <laughs> the trip was a great success and went without a hitch. And I think much of that was due to the fact that I over prepared for the trip. Sometimes I look back and I think that maybe I was a little bit too cautious and waited too long to take my boat on a trip that far. And then someone will tell me how they can't believe I took that really old 19-foot boat down to Annapolis. So whether I was too cautious or foolishly extremely lucky, 
I had more than one successful trip to Annapolis in that boat. And while you can never prepare for every situation, every little bit of preparation you are able to do can be the difference between getting home safely and a very bad day. Well, heading back down our river now. Finished our uh, trip back and forth to Annapolis. Our ride back was um, a little bumpier than our ride going out. Uh, we definitely hit some uh, more turbulent water just south of the Bay Bridge. Uh, it was kind of hard finding some calmer waters. And uh, this little 19-foot boat isn't any match for uh, when, the, when the bay gets a little bit churny. And, uh, but we didn't take any water on and uh, we didn't have any catastrophes. It just was a little challenging. A little rougher than we would have liked it to have been. But we made it all right, right? You gotta roll with the punches. Make sure you adjust your speed, direction you're going. Make sure you kind of go with the waves. Um, but expect it to be bumpy, I guess. Gingy has lots of years of uh, piloting boats, so. Oh. so. <laughs> Don't listen to anything that I say. <laughs> it sounded good, though. It sounded very good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That sounded all right. But uh, anyway, um, but we 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 found out that we could do it. We found out that it really wasn't that hard to work out. Uh, all the details uh, were very, we found out it was very doable. Uh, we did a little bit of a homework before we left. We asked people questions along the way and uh, we utilized a lot of our resources and that really helped. Um, it, was, uh, it was a good day and we really didn't burn a whole lot of fuel, which was awesome. And it didn't take us as long to get there or back as we thought it would. So that was awesome too. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope this uh, video might inspire you to take a few more chances and go a little, uh, do a few things that might be out of your comfort zone. Of course, taking the necessary precautions. Don't be silly. So as you start out boating, be sure to take baby steps. Just take some short trips out. Try things out. Learn how your boat operates. Get comfortable with the controls and the settings and various other types of things with your boat. Because you're going to make mistakes. We all do. And there's going to be things you forgot. Ideally, it's nice to have a better ratio of things that you have prepared for and know how to do than things that you haven't learned or forgot to do. Thanks for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe. I really appreciate it and it'll help me to make more videos. Have a good day.